Ooh, it is official. It is time for Sham Scoops. Look, last time we all hung out, we we found out Draymond Green's suspension. It's indefinite. Shams, any any news there? Yeah, there, there's an update. Uh, I'm told Draymond Green has begun counseling and people around the Warriors, people around Draymond Green, they they see that there's a level of understanding and, and really, uh, you know, grasping that he, there's a process that he's going to go through and undergo to make sure that he's going to return under a full capacity. He's been feeling bad about what transpired. And I'm told the expectation is that Green will remain sidelined via suspension for at least the next three to four weeks. And that means that his suspension was stretch at least approximately 12 games and and at that point you know making sure that he's when he's back he is actually back there's not going to be a, a, a blip there's not going to be a reoccurrence of any more uh from draymond green and i think this this process from what i'm told it'll also consist of regular check-ins with the warriors with the league as him um the team his agent rich paul uh, the league work together on his return process but it's going to be it's going to be at least the next few weeks for draymond green Chandler, what do you think about it? I mean, I heard Shaq the other day talking about, uh, you know, th this is just Draymond. This is how Draymond is. But then he is getting some sort of help. What do you think? Well, I, I think he's taking the proper measures to get better, right? He's starting therapy. Uh, and the growth of him becoming a, a better person is, is hopefully on his way. And now when he comes back, is he going to be fully changed or is he going to, you know, still have that temper and, and get tossed or get a tech, you know, right away? I guess we'll wait and see, but uh, I'm happy that he's taken the proper steps because again, we say this, this isn't, this isn't about basketball anymore. This is be about him becoming a better person because if this lingers, this lingers into his personal life or this lingers off the court, then he's looking at some real issues. So he, he's got to get this under control. This is more important than the NBA or this is more important than any game or fine. He's got to get better as a human being and as a person, and he seems to be do, taking all the right measures to get there. So uh, hopefully hopefully it's not just a PR stunt, and hopefully he's actually bettering himself during this time. Shams, I, we're going to talk Bradley Beal here. I can't believe I'm about to ask you this again, but a different injury, this time against the Knicks. What can you tell us about his status? Nasty right ankle sprain. It, it looked really bad. Good news for Bradley Beal's x-rays, MRI showed no fracture in his ankle, but I'm told he's going to be out at least likely a few weeks, at least three oh. weeks for Bradley Beal that he'll be sidelined. He's only played six games this season. It's just another setback. He's dealt with back issues. We've talked about there's been nerve issues with his back, and now there's this ankle issue. The Suns' big three just got back on the floor last Wednesday. They were playing in their second game. They haven't even played two full games together as a big deal with Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. And now Bradley Beal is going to be out at least the next three weeks, potentially. So it's, it's a tough setback for Bradley Beal, and, and he's going to have to rehab just another injury. It's a law. It's a growing list, Chandler. I mean, if you're, if you're Bradley Beal, if you're the team, how do you deal with this list that continues to get longer, not shorter? Well, this is just brutal, right? Because this is a freak injury. And it, when you work and you grind so hard just to put yourself in the situation to get back, and then something like this happens where it's just completely out of your control and, and you land on, you know, a guy's foot, and 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 now you have to deal with that. Now it's a separate kind of agenda that you have to take. And I, I know he's feeling the pressure and the expectations. And think about how much we all want to see this big three together uh, and, and it sucks because the timing of it they as a team they need to get these reps that are valuable uh yeah this is ugly also he jumps so high on his jump shot it's like the worst yeah. guy from happen to um and he made the shot but it, it's, it's it's just it's tough because you grind you go through all this rehab all this stuff and then you finally back all the excitement and then something completely random happens like this so it, it takes a toll on you mentally brad's a strong dude he's gonna get back from this but as a fan, we, we want to see this big three, right? We want to see how good they can be. We talk about the West is wide open. This is probably my favorite team when healthy, if they can get healthy, which seems like they're not going to for a long time, to be there at the end and contend. So I feel for the dude, uh, and hopefully he can he can get back on the floor soon. But this, this is a tough blow after someone going through all this rehab for his back to have this happen to him. Yeah, and the other thing, with Lou, is, you know, I always wonder – as fans, we look at some players as just being injury prone. Unfortunately, they have bad luck, right? They get the bug. And I wonder, as a team, when he does slowly make his way back from this injury, how cautious do you have to be? 
I don't I don't know if he'll be cautious with an ankle injury, especially if it's like a high ankle sprain or something like that. Once he's once he's available to play again, those injuries are usually not something that's going to be reoccurring. It's something that you're going to re-aggravate. You know, when you're over an ankle sprain or a high ankle sprain, it's usually over and done with by the time you're back on the basketball court. And listen, once he's back, you know, we're talking about another month from now, three weeks to a month from now. I don't think they have the luxury of waiting. You know, I think they got to start really juicing this group up and, and get them going to the group that they're going to need to be in the postseason. So cautious, I don't, I don't, I don't know if they go on on the side of that. I think they just put them out there and play the regular minutes that he was capable of playing. Look, he was back, he was out with a back injury. And he was playing, you know, upwards of twenty five to thirty minutes. So I don't see that being a being an issue when he comes back. Shams, we also have a lot of injuries coming out of Cleveland. Like, it seems something bad is going on in the air up there. What's the latest with the Cavs? Two significant injuries. One, Darius Garland, their star guard, he's going to be out at least four weeks. He's got a fractured jaw. Then Evan Mobley, their big man, he's going to be out six to eight weeks with knee surgery. Oof. So these are two key players that are going to be gone for significant periods of time. They, they had just won nine of 12 games on a recent stretch, and then they lose three in a row, then they won Saturday night. So that's a positive that, that they at least won. But the Donovan Mitchell side of all of this, he's going to be a topic. He's definitely a topic among teams around the league this year and next season left on his contract. And the Cavaliers know this about Donovan Mitchell. He wants to win. He wants to win big. He wants to compete for a championship. And this team right now is, is really in that playoff play-in race and, and if they do drop out, I think a lot of teams are going to be looking into the Cavs. And, and now this is a team that's been hovering around 500. We're just past the 25-game mark. Uh, and so I, I think th these are just two significant injuries for them that they'll have to deal with. Man, that, that is, those are big ones. And I'm wondering, Chandler, if you know, we always hear about the Donovan Mitchell of it all. He wanted to be a Nick. These injuries are probably not helping whatever that situation is in Cleveland. Do you think something comes out of that? Do we hear more murmurs? I think so. I think that we're going to continue to to hear these these rumors of are they moving him? He's unhappy because there's something going on here, right? There's a disconnect. You don't just take this kind of fall off from last year getting home court advantage. I understand they lost to the Knicks in the first round, but this is a great young team with a core that I would think would want to continue to grow together. When you look at Mobley and Garland and Donovan and Karras and Jared Allen, they have the talent, they have the pieces, and they can continue to get better. They have the coach. I think J.B. Bickerstaff is the guy for this job. But, yeah, when your main guy, Donovan Mitchell, you know, you hear all this stuff and there's murmurs how he wants out and he's kind of it's leaking into the locker room. And there's issues with him. And then on top of that, now your other two best players are out. Every It feels like the world's coming down on you. So this is a team that I think had high expectations that we thought would make that jump after last season. And they've gone the other way, which usually it re uh, results in, in sort, sort of move. So if I'm them... I'm listening because I'm not, I don't want to give him the option just to leave and walk and get nothing for him when you can probably get a boatload for him right now. I tell you what, though, Chandler, I, I'm I'm listening, but I'm not hitting the panic button yet. You know, this is a team that's my dog's jumping on me right now. But this is a, yes. uh, this is a team that's <laughs> this is a team that's two two and a half games out of the four spot, man. And so even though they're sitting at eight. You know, they put a good week together, put a couple of good two weeks together. They put themselves in a pretty competitive spot. And so am I listening? Yes. If 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 I'm the Cleveland Cavaliers and I'm looking at all the turmoil that we're going through, of course, I'm listening to offers because like Chandler said, I may be able to get a boatload of assets for him. But at the same time, I'm still trying to compete until that day. And so, you know, they're in a tricky spot. The only, yeah, that's the only problem is they now have to do that without Garland and Mobley, which is that's a tall task. Right. But the you movie, still got that's... you still got Donovan Mitchell. You still got a shot. Shams, the world awaits. The news will break. We will see you tomorrow, bright and early.